everybody. Welcome to the Bodybuilding.com podcast. Nick Coley is here. I'm some kind of editor at the website. Some kind of website. I don't even I don't remember no. what kind of editor I am. But we all know what kind of editor my co-host, Chrissy Kendall, is. It's the science editor because that's the word she chants when she whips me in the office for <laughs> not using proper footnotes. <laughs> Are there any, uh, there any studies on, on whipping people and motivation in an office setting, you think? No, but that sounds like a great <laughs> research project. That's Get IRB study. approval for that. <laughs> or at least WBFF approval yeah. for it. Yeah, <laughs> you can You can grant that, right? Sean Stafford, our guest today, he, he can, uh, is speaking for the WBFF. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can grant you the WBFF uh, <laughs> approval. But we have to use like a big feather to hit me or something. Exactly. Yeah. If there's wings involved. I was going to say, can I wear wings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, our, our guest today is um, a two-time. WBFF world champion fitness model. Am I getting that right? That's correct. All right. Know. Sean Stafford, optimum nutrition athlete. You may have met him over the weekend in Las Vegas if you were able to brave the lines. I heard the lines were rather insane. It was optimum. crazy. The, the lines for the optimum booth are always just, I feel sorry for the people that get in them because this. Mm -hmm three hours yeah what, what do they get do they get to the front of the line <laughs> they get a high five to start yeah. with uh -huh. and a we, shot of amino energy yeah we, we load them up with as much as we can whether it's a pre or cat you know yeah. amino energy yeah something to just calm their nerves <laughs> give them a bit more energy mm -hmm. we're actually trialing the the new opti bars this okay. year so it was immediately given a handful of them it was a bit like trick or treat mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so is there like a you know huge airplane full of bars that flies in i mean i think so i think they come in on pallets really yeah, they have, <laughs> you see the storeroom backstage it's just full of product okay. it's crazy is that, I mean, is that your major uh, your major duty down in las vegas last few days you're just hanging out in the expo or what were you yeah doing? it was mm -hmm. there was it was a real combination of working the booth meeting the meeting the consumers um, filming some content for, mm -hmm. for websites and that sort of stuff. Cool. And yeah, it was a. Uh, it's very hard to have a bad time in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So everyone seems to be there for the same sort of reason, just to go have a good time. Mm -hmm. And when there's that many sort of like-minded sort of fitness enthusiasts in one place, mm -hmm. chances are it's going to be a good weekend. Sure. I, I mean, there is one way to have a bad time though. Um, Chris Ullery, one of our our um, colleagues here, was telling me he ate boiled chicken breast and broccoli on Friday night with somebody who was preparing for a photo shoot. That's That sounds like a pretty bad time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, you, were you yeah, able to eat down there? <laughs> he's, uh, he's not living. <laughs> he's, no, uh, yeah, I mean, he's not, in Vegas, go to the buffets, like I do know. something there. Yeah, we had a uh, we had our 30th birthday party. Um, Optimum Chisholm's 30, 30 years old, so we had a huge party on Saturday night, mm -hmm. and it started off at the buffet at, yeah, at, at the win. <laughs> Nice. Which was good. Wow, just taking over the buffet. I like it. Hmm. Yeah, there was a whole, I think there's like 60 of us. <laughs> I felt sorry for everyone else in yeah. there because it was like a plague of locust just came in and warm, the food was gone. So now, but that, that you're, at that point, it's like, all right, you need to get in the front of the line. You've been watching all these other poor bastards yeah, for exactly. days in the line. Like, I got to let me go up front yeah. right away. <laughs> Um, well, we were uh, we were going to talk about coming back from injury today as a, as a general arc of this conversation. You did a cool piece for us earlier this year. It was a yeah. video that was a shoulder-friendly chest and back workout, I believe, which, you know, it's funny. You never see the shoulder-friendly shoulder workout. It's always a shoulder-friendly yeah. chest workout. <laughs> I don't think there is a shoulder-friendly shoulder workout. No, okay. No. There's just no friendliness involved. No. But we understand that you came back from fairly significant shoulder injury in the last yeah. year or so, right? Was this was that one of those, uh, you know, I, I don't remember the last time I wasn't in pain situations, or was it one of those, oh shit, I just really injured myself? Well, it was one of those things where I think I had a um, I had a bike crash in uh, okay. 2012, yeah, do it. <laughs> and it's one of those things where I, I tore my labrum pretty badly mm -hmm. back in 2012, but I had so many things on, and there was enough muscle mass around the shoulder that you can kind of just deal with it mm -hmm. and yeah. get on with it. And, you know, so many people that get hurt are not hurt bad enough mm -hmm. that they stop. Mm -hmm. They kind of just muddle through and they forget actually what it feels like to be 100% fit. Mm -hmm. And then being 80% fit kind of what is what feels like 100%. And then eventually at 70% and then 60% mm -hmm. until you get to a point where your body just goes, you know what, something's not right. right. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was a case of I just started to lose control in my in my left side mm -hmm. and I woke up when I was in Australia I woke up one day and it was just sh sort of shooting pain into my shoulder mm -hmm. to the point where I couldn't sleep and I was just like something's not right here so I went to get a scan and that's when they found a sort of golf ball sized cyst Oof. in the labrum and mm. it was kind of depressing the nerve mm -hmm. yeah so basically the nerve supplying all the innovation to my shoulder was just shut down yeah so it's amazing what mm. you can get on with right 
you know, when you're actually that messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the cyst developed somehow in response to the it, it was in, in the tear, yeah. So wow. it kind of had been sitting there under the radar growing for about three Just years. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It wasn't, everyone's like, did you not see it? Isn't it like a big lump? And I was like, no, I just thought it was gains. <laughs> No, but it was, any kind of growth. Yeah, yeah any kind of growth. tape measure's going up. Yeah. Exactly, right? Just ch chalk it off. Progress. Uh, I hear that from people all the time, though. Like, and say, oh, I mean, my shoulder mobility shit, you know, on this or that because of a car crash I was in five yeah. years ago. And they think that that's just like, you know, their their path, their life went on a different path at that point. Yeah. There's no going back from it. Is that kind of what you thought? Like, yeah, this is, this is part of my body now. Uh, I kind of thought, yeah, I can, you know, I was still getting sort of either sports massage or physiotherapy or osteopathy sort of once a week trying to just muddle through it. And it was only really to the point when it really had a significant impact on things I could do that I thought, mm -hmm. hey, something's not quite right That's here. Surprising, most people weren't saying, hey, dude, Sean, you could you gotta get that thing looked at. Something ain't right here. Well, this is it. So I had a, I was, you know, the, the therapists that I was seeing kind of say, yeah, it's very similar to like a rotator cuff tear or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, which it's not much you can do. Right. And then one of them said, you know what, You're, the symptoms kind of, don't quite match up. I, I'd get a scan because I think it could be a cyst. And then, lo and behold, hmm. they have a look in there and this Your rear little delt thing. is too large and too you could, uh, To be, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. You couldn't see any cyst because it was uh -huh. deep in the in sort of the labrum. So you couldn't, you wouldn't know there was a cyst hmm. there. It was only... This is hardcore anatomy chat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm like fascinated by this. What was the recovery like once they, once you... Did you have the cyst I, removed? I, I had or? a I had six point surgery, so it was almost a full reconstruction. So when mm. when they went in there, they kind of said, "Look, we've got to remove the cyst. Yeah. We've then got to free up the nerve because you, you, it was depressed. We then got to sew up the labrum. Yeah. And if we're going to do all that, we might as well shave a bit of bone off, clean this out, clean that take, out. While you're take in there, it, it was it was yeah. literally. I think it was very much a case of while we're in there, we'll just try and do everything we can to make it as sort of a successful procedure as possible, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which left me pretty banged up. Yeah, so. and I think for a lot of people, that's the reason why they don't get surgery and why yeah. they settle with 70% yeah. is gonna be my new 100%. Like, I'm okay not ever feeling good because I don't ha wanna have to go through six yeah. surgeries and mm -hmm. the recovery. And I think mentally, that's the toughest part is accepting that. And then, yeah, after that, yeah. you're not gonna be able to do anything and then it's gonna be a slow, long recovery coming mm. back yeah and and you know the surgeons are pretty open with you though they, they give you the this is a 60 percent chance of working so we're going to go in there we're going to chop you up we're going to try and fix you but chances are there's a 60 percent chance this isn't going to work yeah, and i think when you look at those odds and you say that this is going to be not only six months on the sidelines but you know it's almost 50 50 that mm -hmm. you're not actually going to be any better at the end of it i think that's what puts a lot of people off and mm. to be honest if i was going to give advice to people 70 percent against having surgery or 80 percent having surgery and, and you're not an athlete or you know you're, you're a social sportsman or yeah mm -hmm. yeah i would probably give surgery a bit of a miss if i could i'd mm -hmm. say i'd avoid it at all costs you know mm -hmm. you can get physio you can get osteo you can get soft tissue work and you can get by still feeling good mm -hmm. and not go through the the trauma of yeah. having yeah it's hard though with athletes you know and even people who just kind of want to be athletic there's kind of yeah. a badge of honor that starts to develop i'm sure you met you saw this when you're doing all this rowing like yeah. every, somebody gets a tweak they wear it as a badge of honor and it's like oh this is just part of the game yep. you know yeah yeah like how many ice packs can you wrap around <laughs> yourself after a practice or something yeah. because of mm -hmm. how banged up right. you are but you will never stop like i'm just going to keep going keep yeah, going yeah we talked about this a little bit with mark bell where power lifters are just yeah. notorious for just they got their laundry well, those list guys, of complaints yeah. all yeah. the time but well those but, guys they, they push themselves to the limit sort mm -hmm. of their thing is to you know a pound every time you right. know so they're they measure in such small margins mm -hmm. but it's just progress 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 mm -hmm. they're just constantly pushing themselves so yeah. yeah, when you think when you push yourself to the brink like that, mm -hmm. you're gonna hurt yourself. Yeah. Sure, but th those people are battling against pound, uh, pounds on the stage. Like yeah, that's, yeah, their, yeah. that's their sport too. If somebody whose sport is more physique based, like you can think like, okay, maybe I can work around this. You know? Exactly. Uh, but at the same time, are you committing yourself to being one of those people who just does you know 45 minutes of prep for 10 minutes of work in the gym for the yeah, rest yeah, of yeah. your life at that point? So uh, yeah, it was, it's interesting you talk about about the recovery. I want to know what uh, yeah, kind of when you at you, the procedure's done. You're you're deep into recovery, deep into rehab, and you're starting to think like, okay, yeah. Wh when did you sort of discover what your new normal was going to be? Um, I would say it's only really been the last six months. Really? Yeah. Wow. So there was, I'd say it probably took about five months before I could 
train properly mm-hmm. or feel feel comfortable to train. And if I'm honest, I don't feel 100% comfortable and confident doing certain mm-hmm. movements even now. So if you ask me to do some snatches, I would say, nah, I'll mm-hmm. be okay. Okay, we were going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there so that, goes the second That sort of half. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's man against yeah. reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, fairly controlled and... I, I, mm-hmm. Certain exercises I can do no problem, and I'm probably as strong as I was before surgery. But now there's certain exercises which I know are just going to make it worse. Mm-hmm. And there's always going to be some level of imbalance and sort of structural deficiency in there. And yeah, I do my rehab, I do my stretching, I do my all that sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. it's always going to be a little bit off. Mm-hmm. So there's some things which you just learn to avoid, and yeah. you know, plan your training mm-hmm. around it. Sure. And Did, do you? Oh, so go ahead. I was going to ask if you had someone that helped you map out or plan how to incorporate certain exercises back because I know I'm guilty of this. I get an injury and the minute I start to feel a little bit better, I'm like balls to the wall, like let's do it. And then I just get injured again. Um, And that's the story of my life. Um, I don't know how to pull back. Um, And so I imagine prior to surgery, you're doing almost everything you know whether it felt comfortable or not but you have that image in your head of oh i can do this or i know how to do this and then all of a sudden you have surgery and it's a very slow process and i'm sure there were some temptations to be like let me just try it. Let me just see yeah. this. And so how did you weren't you... just training calves for six yeah, months? Like... Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe so... you were. No, I'd how did wasn't. you kind of? You, you've ma- seen my calves, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, yeah volume you, calves. Yeah, yeah. they're running back to back. I don't think I've trained them for six minutes, let alone six months. <laughs> so. <laughs> so did you work? Uh, did you have a trainer and yeah, anyone I actually, who was kept you on track? And yeah, said, I actually no. hired a coach. So okay. I hired. Um, I, I, I'm really lucky that I have a, a team of trainers that I work with at my gym in London. And we have a, a rehab specialist. He's got a master's in exercise science, and he's he's very good at rehab. So I just said to him, I need to hire you for two 45-minute sessions a week. I paid the money. I blocked the time out. And it was mm-hmm. just one of those things where that's kind of – anybody that has a trainer, one of the best things about it is it holds you accountable, mm-hmm. and it means that you don't skip it, and you don't, you know, you don't just go and do legs. You don't just jump on a treadmill, you, you know. It forces you to be diligent and to tick off all the things you need to tick off. And – not only that, but you've got another set of eyes watching you so that your form will be better, your technique will be better. You know, they'll, when you maybe go, ah, oh, I'm gonna stop, they'll say, actually, you could probably do a couple more reps there or slow it down, mm-hmm. engage the right muscles, sort of make sure everything's firing the right way. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think it cost me, what, 500, or well, the equivalent, about $500 mm-hmm. for, the, for the first six weeks. And it's just yeah. like, yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, right it off. fits versus another surgery. Exactly, down. exactly. like thousands yeah. of dollars for, mm-hmm. yeah. And for me, the hardest thing about being sort of the rehab process was that I wasn't able to train 100%, and that's, that's what I love doing. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was $500 spent, but it's going to get me there quicker. Yeah. It's going to yeah. get me to where I need to be quicker. So mm-hmm. I, was, I was happy to pay it. Mm. So with all the work that they did on your shoulder, is that like a bionic shoulder now? How's this? beautiful range of motion the other one's the bad shoulder no not quite it's still (laughs) as i said it's 60 percent no it's 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 not 100 percent. but again it's it's one of those things where i think for the rest of my life i'll probably have to spend a bit more time warming it up working on the sort of the the rotator cuffs on my left hand side are are still weaker than my right hand side Mm -hmm. my pec on my left hand side is still a lot tighter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where i still get soft tissue i still spend 15 minutes before every session Mm -hmm. warming it up and Mm -hmm. i think that's just part of my life now but sure. has, as it, you, has it changed like the the priorities that you use when you you know construct your split or something like 100 like chest, yeah. chest and back is not the, the pairing that everybody does by any means or yeah. I saw you had another video online that was shoulders and back yeah um is, is that do you, do you have that in mind when you when you construct those i i actually don't train shoulders mm-hmm. as in I, I very very rarely train shoulders in isolation as in a lot of guys that especially guys that compete in physique you know shoulders is a big day for them mm-hmm. for me it's not because i actually recruit shoulders nearly doing everything else when i train back i re- mm-hmm. recruit shoulders when i train chest i recruit shoulders arms shoulders mm-hmm. so for me i don't want to overwork them mm-hmm. as then i try and base my splits around recovery patterns and i know that my shoulders need mm-hmm. a high level of recovery so i actually combine a lot of the time i call it a weak link program so things that are not so good so hamstrings lower back and mm-hmm. the smaller muscles of the shoulders sort of like mm-hmm. the medial delts the rear delts those sort of things i kind of chunk them together into like a 30 40 minute program mm-hmm. and that's kind of what i do when i've got 
35, 40 minutes. Okay, uh, and so I might like not. Almost an active recovery day you toss that kind in of, or Kind of. That's it's, a cool approach. Yeah. yeah it's, it's whenever I've got a couple of days where I'm not smashing a really hard workout, I'll look to push on and, and kind of build up this weak link program so that eventually those weaker muscles will be just as good as the, mm-hmm. the other mm-hmm. ones, the power muscles. And, and when somebody in the gym sees you doing that, do you, do you stop and say, well, give them the functional exercise? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, well, you see here. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's like yeah. in- injuries, um, injuries can be kind of like pregnancies, I found. Like father, everybody who's yeah. gone through a pregnancy, father and mother, you know, they, 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 they've got the lesson to take They become away, an instant you know? expert, a, right? Instant yeah, expert. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I can tell you all about pregnancies and yeah. births and everything. And, and everybody who's had an injury, like, they come back. They're at six, Even if they're just at 60% again, yeah. they'll tell you everything you want to know yeah. about it. Yeah. So it's, it's actually quite um, – so I'd say probably the – if people get in touch with me on, on my Facebook page or on Twitter or on something, I'd say – 30% of all the questions I get asked, apart from, hey, bro, how do you get abs? <laughs> uh, you know, I've hurt my shoulder. What can I do? And although I've been through the process, I know the, I know how complex the shoulder mm-hmm. is and how everyone's circumstances are completely different. So mm-hmm. I always have to say, look, go see a trained professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go yeah. see a doctor. Go see a physio. Go see an osteo. Get their advice. And then if you really want to, you know, if you really want to come back to me and let me, you know, let me know what they said. Right. You know, go on my YouTube. See, I, I vlogged the whole rehab process. Mm-hmm. I can steer you in the right direction. You know, some of the articles on bodybuilding.com, that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like people kind of think because you've had an injury that all of a sudden you're a qualified to mm-hmm. give advice right. on it. And you know, and I think as a as a sort of healthcare pro- or you know fitness professional, you've got to be really careful about that. Sure. Yeah. And this wasn't like the standard bro impingement that you had. No. Either. This was right. this yeah. was real deal. Like everybody who trains in the gym. Every once in a while, just because we have shitty posture and shitty jobs, yeah. Yeah, you fight against some shoulder impingement sort of stuff. Yeah. But most people, they take that five hundred dollars maybe in their health savings account that I've got. I have five hundred dollars. I'm thinking about right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> like you could, there's so much you can probably yeah, yeah. do with that, as you say. Like yeah, but before thinking about surgery, especially, I mean, back is the other thing. People oh, hurt their backs, wow. and there've been. Uh, my wife works for a health information company. She was telling me that yeah, it's fifty fifty for improving your situation. Everybody's yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm going to get back surgery. It's going to be all better. Yeah. It doesn't make no. you better. No. <laughs> no. I mean, it can, I suppose. But Yeah, again, but I think it's all relative to the injury, the status of the injury. Mm-hmm. But, um, I'm interested, did any of your goals or have your goals changed like prior to you having surgery and someone said, where do you see yourself in five yeah. years as far as like training, competing, that sort of thing? Um, professionally, obviously being yeah. in the fitness industry to now, where you kind of see yourself, um, and again, this is more of like a physique. Like, you know, do you are you obviously probably not trying to set you know PRs and yeah, an yeah. overhead press anytime soon. No, um, <laughs> no. but <laughs> nope, not doing it. But ha- you know, have you had to readjust any of those or kind of consider and be like, okay, let's take a step back and think what I want to prioritize right now, and then how I'm going to get. Yeah, to that I think I think any any guy, especially that's he sort of goes to the gym and especially guys that compete in physique or bodybuilding, you know, they just want to get as big and as jacked mm-hmm. as possible, right? So they want to go in there, they want to be pushing huge numbers, they want to be getting as big as possible. And I know that just, I don't know whether I'm getting older mm-hmm. or whether it's because I've had surgery or just because I think as you, you spend time in the gym, your interests do kind of evolve and, and, and shift. For me, it's a case of I still want to be strong, I still want to be lean, I still want to have good balance in my body. But for me, it's a case of I want to be Mm -hmm. Mm pain-free and I want to feel functionally Mm -hmm. fit. You know, I've I've never done CrossFit, but I look at it and I go, wow, I'd love to be able to do that. I just know that functionally I can't. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I think there doesn't necessarily, I think how you gauge progress maybe evolves. Mm -hmm. So whereas before it was just kind of like, yeah, I want to wear an XL Uh t-shirt and it'd be... (laughs) skin tight <laughs> yeah i think yeah. now it's more of a case of you know i'd love to be able to do a handstand push-up uh-huh. or you know i'd love to be able to row 500 meters in you know a minute 15 mm-hmm. and i think maybe it's just the time you spend in the gym and how your your goals sort of evolve yeah absolutely mm-hmm. yeah and you know there's all sorts of interesting research also saying you don't need big numbers to have big muscles anyway right that's a constant back and forth that we, that yeah, we actually, people gonna struggle say, with like we always people people discussion. chasing numbers yeah. in this office or in any gym 
they're all, they often do it at the expense of their yeah. future in the gym. It's, well, I'm weak as person. I'm yeah. pretty big. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, I mean, <laughs> Nick and I always talk about, you know, one RM testing yeah. and why, like, how important is it to know, like, one time? And, and Nick always brings up a good point. Like, isn't it, doesn't it mean so much more if you can do something three or five times, yeah. like lift a certain way, weight in good form multiple times? Isn't that, you know, couldn't that be used as strength? And then you're less likely to have some sort of injury from, you know, lifting a heavy load way, you know, more than what mm-hmm. you can handle. Yeah. So just looking at strength differently than, one rm mm-hmm. or you know lifting a car or even <laughs> testing your one rm we had we had an interesting piece come out a couple of days ago from a great coach named mike robertson where he said yeah you're going to use your one rm for reference here but you can use a weight that you do for five times to calculate it don't use you know like yeah. don't use your 10 rm to calculate your one rm but use your five rm to yeah. calculate it and it's it works it's mm-hmm. good it's good enough for everyone and mm-hmm. at the same time they don't just totally max out their mm-hmm. nervous system max out their muscles to the point where that's like oh i tested my one rm now I got to go to bed for two weeks yeah. afterwards. You know? <laughs> I, think, I think that's what a lot of people underestimate is that tax on the, the CNS, mm-hmm. the central nervous system, just gets battered. Mm-hmm. I, did a, um, I did a mini phase of wave loading mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And gee, I was so tired. Mm-hmm. I think two weeks in, I was just spent. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, okay, step back. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I did a 20 rep deadlift program, yeah, which just ended that's... last week, ended because I had that same sensation. Yeah. I was like, fuck this. I want two weeks off. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. After, after four, I think it was four or five weeks. And I was like, I just, I, my body is kind of telling me all the time that you're still not really recovered from this. Yeah. Three times a week, 20 rep, three sets mm-hmm. of 20 in this deadlift. You know, it doesn't have to be a whole lot of weight. It just, yeah. it just starts to chew you up after a little while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I think we've all probably... But, experience that coming out of bed in the morning can't can't really move and you're but like I why what is you know, what? like you can i mean the, the the advantage of heaviness is you can feel like you're uh you can do more with less you know yeah. like yeah. oh okay I, I got one heavy thing in here i don't have to just pile on you know hours and hours of volume in order to feel like i actually achieved something yeah. in the gym but i think you know? too like I mean, that was all great like i did that when i was younger not saying i'm old by any means but yeah when She's i'm 21 <laughs> <laughs> when I'm like having to, you know, stand up from kneeling on the ground and I hear my knees pop and it's like, yeah. oh, I'm like, mm-hmm. why am I doing this? So, like, what is the point? I will never compete in the Olympics. I mean, unless something crazy happens. But, like, <laughs> At what? the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Olympics comes <laughs> calling at bodybuilding.com. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, there's a shortage. Yeah, we need a badminton player. <laughs> um but yeah, you just, I, I, you know, as you were talking about it, it's like read or just considering what your goals are, what do you want to be doing five years from now, six years from mm-hmm. now? And I mean, even for myself being a collegiate athlete to now how I train is a complete 180. Like I think back to how I did three hours of training a day yeah. and I'm like dying after one hour now. I'm like, that's good. I'm done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but you know, you just kind of step back and think, what am, what am I trying to prove? Mm-hmm. And I love to have goals. I think goals are great, but having goals that you see yourself being able to continue and progress forward on mm-hmm. and build off on. Having a, having so, a kid around can help bring mm-hmm. some of this into clarity yeah. as well. I imagine puts a lot into perspective. Yeah. Yeah. they're they're functional. Like yeah. they're very functional. You want to hang out with them, keep up with them. Yeah, yeah. you can't just be just destroying yourself all yeah. the time. Yeah, I. I with my boy because uh we are his cot in the room and because he's he's very small mm-hmm. bending down and over to pick him up and as he gets heavier and heavier yeah. and heavier it's like my back is like oh wow mm-hmm. yeah. yeah oh yeah i know my, my older son he's four and a half and he's officially like you know almost too too heavy to carry now he's yeah. about 40 pounds but it's like 40 seriously long yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awkward and he wants to be carried every once in a while just like oh i'm so sleepy carry me there I'm like dude you're a sandbag yeah. you know? <laughs> i gotta put you over my shoulder yeah, there you go. <laughs> A but yard run I mean, I don't know. I feel like if if I if I'm so gassed that I can't play with him and play with him to a degree where like we're both having a hell of a lot of fun, I'm missing out on a lot. Yeah. too. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's where sort of your perspective changes. You know, you, what mm-hmm. would you rather do? Be able to play for 45 minutes without even without even puffing mm-hmm. with your boy, or you know, be jacked and wear a large t-shirt. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. 
it puts things into priority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kids they they seem like they they don't have rotator cuffs. I think they no, just... they don't, do they? Like, <laughs> no. I remember I remember when I was a kid, I was like, I was never ever injured. Yeah. Right. They don't like, have tight hamstrings. Yeah, they don't. Or hip flexors. No yeah. shoulder issues. Are, I mean, are there are there hips thinking? Because I watch kids squat all the yeah. damn time. Yeah. Are their hips fundamentally different than ours? Do you know this? Like, is there something that happens between age? Four and age thirty, where your hips just kind of go. Nope. Yeah, I know. It I feels mean, like it. Because even, but no, even but the, yeah. the squatting culture, yep. people. You yeah. look at people on a you know a train platform in Japan or India. Their their squat isn't a little kid squat necessarily. It's yeah. it's a little different. Yeah. No, it's crazy because none of that changes, and and what they hmm. relate to, even as we get older and increasing our risk for falls and fractures, yeah. it's a lot of it is not because we're. I mean, yes, you have hormone changes, you have things like that, but a lot of it is because we just become more inactive, whether that's flexibility. Yeah. Um, and as you get into your 60s, 70s, and 80s, a lot of times we see people doing less weight bearing, so then their bones become yeah. weaker. Yes, you have issues, and, and you see estrogen go down, and that can affect, you know, for women, bone formation. But a lot of it is because we just are more physically inactive. And I know as I was, when I was younger, um, because of the sports I played, I was always stretching and, and doing all that sort of stuff. I don't do it anymore. And it that is, like, the number one reason yeah. I think why I'm in pain or, like, have tightness is just because... I, I lift weights, I do all that, but I don't stretch anymore. Mm-hmm. I tell myself every Sunday night, like, I'm going to start this week stretching. Hmm. And it yeah. lasts for one day. But it's it's hard. It's, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's, it's interesting it's hearing painful. you talk about weak links because pizza, you, you can kind of take two paths there. You can be like, all right, yeah, you stretch what's tight, but then there's also the, well, I'm going to strengthen what's weak and try yeah. to, you know, add in some yeah. natural flexibility by working on weak links. And, and structural you, balance. You, exactly. You hear, you hear strength coaches all the time say, oh, you think you should be stretching your hamstrings. Your hamstrings aren't the problem. It's, it's your weak it's, hip yeah, flexors, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, how, how do you navigate that uh, when, when your body is your business? I think you've just got to try and be as informed as possible, haven't you? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you know your body isn't, you've had it for 30 plus years, mm-hmm. you know, so you kind of know what's weak and you kind of know what's tight. And yeah, take, take advice from experts, you know, if you've got a, a, a practitioner that you trust and, that, you know, they tell you to go and strengthen your glutes and mm-hmm. stretch out your hips and all that sort of stuff then yeah take their advice but mm-hmm. you know you know you know what makes you feel better you mm-hmm. know that if you sit there and you put a golf ball in your piriformis mm-hmm. and you you know put a band through your hip and all of a sudden you can move a lot freer and mm-hmm. your yeah. squat goes deeper and everything works a bit better mm-hmm. so that empirical evidence is pretty it's yeah. pretty sort of damning mm-hmm. you know I'd listen to that yeah but then you kind of have to do it over and over again. That's, I know, that, the hard that's part. my problem. Yeah. I was like, I have to do this every day. Every time. Yeah. This is the thing. Like, I'd say most people, you know, they, they think of a workout as being, you know, I'm in the gym for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. I'm like, yeah, you're in for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. First 15 minutes is this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, then you've still got 45 minutes of hard out, super intense mm-hmm. work. Then you've got 15 minutes to stretch and cool mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just the case of you don't have to be balls out a hundred percent for an hour and 15 minutes because chances are you won't be a hundred percent you'll right. you know that's too long to be at a max yep. so yeah really I, I always split it into those three phases of pr- preparation high intensity work and then recovery so mm-hmm. yeah, i noticed in the uh, in the chest and back video that you did um there was foam rolling and all these things. Yeah. And then I kind of got skipped over in the actual video. They were like, all right, let's get to the workout, which I don't, <laughs> I don't fun blame stuff. them. Yeah. No, but nobody yeah. wants to watch you sit there It's not sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Foam rolling's not sexy. Oh. But at the same time, it does give you kind of an opportunity to get your mind in in the right place for the yeah. intensity that maybe you, you can safely get into after that, I imagine. And a lot of people, they always forget to take their pre. So mm-hmm. they always, until they get in the gym, like, oh, shit, I have yeah. to take my pre. So that yeah. gives it time to kick in. Yeah. That gives you time to, and also even that foam rolling and that stretching, you know, it starts to get your endorphins flowing mm-hmm. a little bit. It gets you more in the mood, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chances are you, there'll be other people training in the gym. You know, you'll see some guys lifting heavy. You'll see some girls training hard. And it's like, yeah, you yeah, just start baby. to soak, you know, kind of get involved with the environment. You kind of soak up the intensity that's in the gym. And then mm-hmm. when it's your turn, you just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I just got to tell myself that. And actually do it <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for coming and, and talking with us um i don't know I, I feel like there's a weak link training piece that needs to happen as i think i'm doing it tomorrow really there we go yeah yeah, i think i am because awesome. they, they asked me to do you know the i think they call it a quick video or something or uh-huh. a quick yeah. training video yeah. 
and that just happens to be my what I do when I've got 35, 40 minutes. Fantastic. Yeah. And I'm perfect. pretty sure that will come out before this podcast. Does. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just so, time uh, warp it. Go back and, in time yeah. and uh, check out the what looks approximately like a weekly training video from Sean Stafford. I don't yeah. know what it's going to be, be called. It'll yeah. be called something cool, I'm sure. <laughs> well, great. Thanks for yeah. coming and talking with us. So Thank you for having me. It. Your shoulder. It's been a sensitive a sensitive subject, I imagine, but you seem like you've, you've no, embraced no, it comfortably. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. It's you know, it's, it's nice that there are a lot of people that go through it, mm -hmm. and if you can just give someone, you know, and I, you know, a little glimpse at, you know, what it's going to suck yeah. mm -hmm. for a while, yeah. but just do little things yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. And life does exist after having surgery, and oh, yeah. after you know, like there's something potentially to live for. A long for. Ass yeah, time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> potentially for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you well, do it right. <laughs> so tell uh, tell our listeners where else they can find you. Um, you can follow me on my Facebook page, which is Sean Stafford Fitness. Or on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, which is just at Sean Stafford. Mm -hmm. ah, fairly easy. But I keep it simple. Remember. There's no underscores. Yeah. No there, underscores. Are, there are other Sean's with different spellings. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm English. Yeah. If, you, if you guys haven't <laughs> if you realized, haven't if, you didn't, if you didn't notice from my expo raspy voice, um, S-H-A-U-N. Okay. S-T-A-F-F. -F that's the Sean you're seeking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the one. All right. Thanks for talking with us. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. 